welcome to this video on Boot Town 1839 to 1987. So this is the little snippet of GCSE content and how this will be working is we're going to produce a few videos with information for you and we'll be testing you in lessons. Over the course we need to be able to describe who came, where from and why. We need to explain their experiences and how they were received and we need to evaluate key events and impact. So you're probably wondering what is boot town we'll get on to that in a second now the structure of the exam is very simple you've got two 10 mark questions the first question is a nice easy explain how question and there's a number of examples at the end of this powerpoint and the second question is a study of two sources now it seems to be that you get an image a primary source or a secondary source and then um, a written piece of information and you may need to make a judgment about how useful we're going to do a separate video covering how to answer those but you can use this as an example just to have a look at so a timeline, our course starts in 1839 when the West Boot Dock opens um, and it's followed by the TIFF Railway in 1841 and it goes all the way until 2006, although we'll be kind of stopping at about 18, uh, 1987, 1988 and how um, Boot Town has changed over that time. So an overview. In the 1940s census, there were 45 to 50 nations represented in a population of about 5,000. That is a huge number of immigrants, which is why Boot Town is so important to us, as it's representative of the immigration due to the empire and due to Britain's expanding role. And it, it nicely highlights um, just how diverse Britain's background is. And you can see the number of people and where they've come from. Now, Whereabouts is Boot Town? It's in Cardiff in South Wales. So you can see it benefits from being relatively close to the west of England. It also benefits from being a short journey from Ireland. And when we zoom in uh, deeper, this is the area that we'll be talking about, Boot Town. Now the West Dock was built first, followed by the East Dock, followed by Alexandra and the other docks that followed. And we'll be looking at uh, the experiences of the people of Boot Town in that time. Now people came to Boot Town because of coal. Coal was the driving force. There was huge demand of it at the end of the um, 18th century, so the end of the 1700s. Due to the Industrial Revolution, steam and coal powered everything. The manufacturing, um, the manufacturing, the railroads, the steam, uh, steamboats, the steamers, and the second Marcus of Boot invested in a dock. He realised that he could capitalise on the market. South Wales, the valleys had excellent coal and so they were able to export it from these uh, from the South Wales. Now originally it was taken by a canal or by a, a horse down into the dock that was built and then it was exported to the rest of the world and to England. Irish workers were bought over by the, the Marquis um, over to Boot Town in 1839. They built it, they built the houses that were going to house themselves and all of the other seamen that were going to be joining them and then by 1841 the Tiff Vale Railway was built. So these two in conjunction meant that we could easily export coal from Boot Town and we could easily get it there via the railway in 1841. Now two communities started to spring up. One, the houses for the workers and the seamen. They were rows of houses, terraced houses, and then large town houses that were normally three or four storeys for the owners, the captains, etc. The potato famine in 1840 increased Irish immigration and it led to a larger group appearing in Boot Town. There was also a small group of Jewish shopkeepers and salesmen and they came over to Wales in 1813. Over the next century it's going to expand mainly due to coal. Ships are going to hire workers from around the world and Boot, Boot Town becomes a multicultural working class community and its nickname is Tiger Bay. <coughs> Now, in 1839, it starts. John Crichton Stewart, the second Marquis of Boot, builds docks on his land to profit from the high-quality coal of the Welsh Valleys. It started in 1836 by Irish diggers known as Navvies, who were brought over from Cork to the West um, Butte Dock in 1839. And as we've said, in, by 1841, the Tiff Railway was introduced as well. This led to a second dock being built by 1859. So you can see that really it's starting to become incredibly profitable. Dock workers and seamen live closely in closely packed terrace houses um, and we look at Luden Square, I've spelled that incorrectly, L-O-U-D-O-U-N, Luden Square where the richer owners, merchants and captains live. Now Boot Town, uh, the Irish labourers settle in the north of Boot Town in what is known as New Town and it becomes nicknamed Little Island and it's going to be the start of some of the troubles from 1848. Now there's a riot in Little Island 
and that is due to the increased immigration from Ireland due to the potato famine. Thousands of refugees land in the area around Boot Town and they faced a number of hostility from the population. The ships themselves were often overloaded, the human cargo which is what they were known as, were often diseased or starving. Some of them had had journeys that were over a week long from Ireland to Wales due to bad conditions, and many of them were already in terrible, condi uh, terrible state when they actually landed. Now, why was there pressure on the local economy? Well, they were very poor. They, these were refugees seeking um, a better life. There was disruption to the local economy. Newtown itself became overcrowded, and they brought with it disease. In Cardiff, for example, 350 people died of cholera. There was a religious differences between the Protestant Welsh and the Catholic Irish. Welsh people themselves were afraid of the changes and there was a threat of disease that led to a system of blaming the Irish for this. Now we can see this is the example of the diversity in 1850, a visit to Tiger Bay and you can see the number of different faces from all around the world. In 1848 there is a, a street fight that lends, leads to the death of a Welshman called John Lewis. and The man that was responsible is called John Connors and it led to 150 Irishmen arming themselves with pick handles, marching into Cardiff to protect themselves on the day of the man's funeral. Welsh people lined the streets, angry at the death, and you can see the report on the right-hand side of the riot in Cardiff. The military were called out, and it led to eventually Connors being arrested. He was cleared of murder, found guilty of manslaughter, and sent to Australia. Uh, one example of some of the problems of immigration from the Irish community in this period. Conditions for Irish uh, migrants were not pleasant. Newtown was six very small streets with 200 odd houses around West Dock. The houses were built quickly and as such sanitation was poor, crime was high and there was a lot of disease. Below is a quote from the health inspector who visited Stanley Street and finds 54 men, women and children living in one room. And you can read that for yourselves about how disgusting the conditions were. So to recap, we've got the Irish immigrants coming over to build Boot Town. Eventually, um, more refugees come because of the potato famine and they live in terrible conditions. They're not particularly well liked by the Welsh community themselves. From 1850 to 1900 we see a real development in Boot Town and it becomes a coal metropolis. Cardiff by 1900 is actually the largest coal exporter in the world and that of course brings over additional business. We get ship owners from Norway, Greece and the west of England setting up their headquarters around the docks and that leads to expansion. We've got the Roth and Alexandra docks being opened up. By 1857 Cardiff handled over a million tonnes a year in exports. By 1913, it had gone to 12.6 million tonnes. And you can see that Cardiff is larger than London and Liverpool. Shops and services start to reflect this increased um, prosperity. So we've got Brackey's um, ice cream parlour opening in 1901 from Welsh Italian migrants. And many of the shops were started to be owned by Jews that had settled in 1813. Irish and English gypsies were also able to profit from door to door services such as watch mending, sharp knife, uh, and knife sharpening, etc. And in 1883, the Cardiff Coal Exchange is built, and it is a huge um, uh, lobby where trade can happen. Indeed, by 1901, the first million pound trade in the world was agreed with France. So here's an example of the hundreds of people that are attending the new Cardiff Exchange opening. And you can see the, the scale of development in Boot Town. This tiny town on the south coast next to Cardiff has really developed into something because of coal. Now, one of the earliest routes that was taken by the steam, um, the steam train, uh, sorry, the steam boats goes from um, Cardiff, sails south along the Mediterranean to the Canary Islands, where it stops to trade. It then goes to Cape Verde which is the uh, just off the coast of Africa, before stopping at Senegal, before making its way across the Atlantic to the West Indies to again trade coal, then to New Orleans before loading up back for the journey back to England. Now, as you can imagine, with each stop, it trades goods, it produces profit, but it also brings with it seamen from around the world. I can hear Miles laughing already, so please get used to this. So 1850 to 1900, we start to see the first immigrants coming to Boot Town. Now, probably they were Portuguese-speaking West Africans from Cape Verde. By 1850s, we've got communities of Africans and West Indians beginning to grow in Boot Town itself. 
For example, steamers to the Mediterranean hired Greeks, steamers that went to Scandinavia hired Norwegians. 1869, we've got the creation of the Suez Canal and therefore these steamboats can travel to Asia much more cheaply. They brought with them Yemenis, Egyptians and Somalis. In fact, Somalian settlers, uh, sorry, Yemeni settlement settlers, particularly from the Shamiri tribe, were recruited, often through bribery, and they actually form the oldest continual Muslim community. They are still in existence today in South Wales. Merchant routes move further east by the 1880s, and that brings with them Chinese, Malay, Gujarati, and Bengali seamen, and they're collectively known as Lascars. Seamen in Cardiff had to compete for jobs and they would gather outside the post office and James's Street hoping for work. And as you can see in the writing in the red, their treatment was not particularly pleasant. They were poor, they were underpaid in comparison to the white seamen, and they had no steady employment. They started, though, to mix with Welsh women, and they started to marry them indeed. And so by, 18, by 1900, we have a diverse and mixed community developing. How did their treatment really duff, uh, uh, differ? Well... Some of them were reliant on Christian missions and charity. We've got the Flying Angel Mission and the John Corey Soldiers and Sailors Rest Home. Where else could these seamen start to stay? They also had lodging houses that were cheap. Wealthier residents from Luton Square started to move to north of Cardiff and their townhouses started to become lodging for migrant seamen. Now, the industrial wealth that Boot Town brought by 1911 was entirely reliant on the labour of thousands of merchant seamen and dock workers. And this, of course, caused unrest. It led to class conflict, and we see a rise in trade unions. Seamen were divided, particularly into coloured and white, and we see the growth of the National Union of Seamen, who themselves feel that migrant workers are taking jobs on lower pay that undermine the white pay themselves. Relations particularly deteriorate at times of crisis, and we'll see this in the next video in the 1911 laundry crisis, where Chinese immigrants and Welsh communities start to clash. So, some example questions that we'll be looking at next. We've got Donald John being interviewed about Tiger Bay, a contemporary source. He used to sneak into Tiger Bay with his brother Billy. It was a wild place with lots of black people. So one Sunday we went off and we got to Boot Road, a long road with a series of shops and cafes, and almost everyone was a brothel, though we didn't know what a brothel was. There there'd be girls sitting outside on chairs with their legs crossed. They'd say, come here, darling, and they used to rub our heads for good luck and give us some coppers. So we can see some of the experiences of Boot Street in the bottom right-hand corner from those experiences experiencing it at the time. Tiger Bay was a very diverse mixed community as we can see from the steam crew on the left hand side and it really starts to highlight just how much immigration had occurred in this period. So the questions that we've covered so far, can you explain why Irish migrants came to Cardiff in the 1840s? You've got a couple of answers that you can give. Explain why there were riots between the Welsh and Irish residents in 1848. You've got that one cause, but then you've also got the underlying factors that you can use to explain that answer. So, uh, thirdly, explain why so many businesses came to Boot Town. Two answers, really, you can give here. And then question four, explain why men from around the world came to Boot Town in the 19th century. Now, in the next video, we'll start to explain uh, the next four questions before in the final video looking at the, the impact of World War II, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, right up until the modern day with the creation of the Cardiff Assembly. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening.